special thank you to Bezel House for lending these two watches in for this video today. Seiko used to represent value for money in their professional dive watch segment. I don't think they can say that they are now. A 62 mass reissue in my country is almost $1,500. Speaking of which, you can get an entry-level Swiss watch that is a dive watch, like the Mita Ocean Star 200 Ceramic here, with a Powermatic 80 movement that is modified, has a regular escapement, is based off the Eta 2836 and is serviceable, and you can also get a Tissot Sea Star 1000 with a similar movement but a synthetic escapement. Big difference is that you'll have to replace the movement at the service interval. However, when you look at the watches, both of them side by side, the Tissot is even less expensive than the Mito Ocean Star 200. In my country, it's almost $300 difference. The Mito, on the other hand, gets away with more sophisticated features. AR-coated sapphire crystal is an example on both the underside and on the top side. There'll be no doubt some commenters who will say that these should not be compared because of the price difference between both of them. However, I'll counter back to say that the Mito can be found sometimes for a discount for as low as $850 before you even get to something that's used. So in that vein of thinking, they both make very competitive and compelling dive watches. There are quite a few similarities with both these watches. Ceramic bezels, gray dials, brushed cases with center polished links. Although the differences are in the mid case. When you look at the side of the case, the Tissot is more slab sided and there's, there's a polished cutout on the side of the case compared to the Mito. I think the Mito is a more contemporary, more simplistic looking watch than the Tissot. On the wrist, however, both of them share quite similar footprint. Now when I say footprint, I mean on my 6.4 inch wrist, both these watches have comfort nailed down. Now the Mito is 48.5 millimeters in lug to lug length compared to the 43 millimeter lug length of the Tissot. So the 43 by 43 case on the Tissot means that it wears more square. That actually is quite a good thing to have on the wrist. Even though the, the Tissot is slightly wider and the Mito is slightly longer, they both have very similar look on the wrist. Please note in the split view, there is a bit of distortion as I had the Mito closer to the camera. However, they do look quite similar in size. Part of being siblings in the Swatch group means that they share technology. And you can see it's evident here with both these watches. Yes, they have ceramic bezels, gray dials, brush cases, center polished links like I mentioned before. But what about the dials? Well, the dials, both of them are different in the way that one is sunburst and the other one's more flat gray. They both get a screw down crown, however one has more water resistance than the other, towards the favor of the Tissot at 300 meters. And then when you look at the actual use and execution and finish work, it's hard to separate between the two. We have to dig a little bit deeper to find out if it is actually worth nearly the $300 difference between the Tissot and the Mito. The Tissot offering 300 meters of water resistance means that the case will be a little bit thicker. At 12.7 millimeters compared to 12.25 millimeter thick of the Mito. And I think that's marginal, because both of these watches, they have quite similar shape. By that I mean that the lugs are gently tapered towards the wrist, not aggressively so. The bracelet on the Mito is tapered from a 22 to a 19 mil, whereas the Tissot is a straight 22 millimeter from the top side of the end links all the way down to the clasp. It's not my preferred choice. The finish work on both of them are quite similar. However, I do think that the Mito edges ahead in the brushwork. When I say this, the Mito seems to have a finer satinated grain on the clasp and on the bracelet. There's a dive extension on both. The Mito here is an easier one with two buttons to deploy it, whereas the Tissot, you have to unclick it and pull it out on the back side of the clasp. The stamped steel uh, clasp of the Tissot is a little bit of a letdown. I feel like they could have done better in this department, but keep in mind, this watch is still a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the Mito. Flipping both watches around reveal that the Ocean Star has its signature case back with the Ocean Star logo affixed by screws compared to the Tissot and its exhibition case back 
but a screw down, interestingly enough with 300 meters of water resistance. The Mido, on the other hand, I think I prefer it to the Tissot, but it's not by much. I still wish the Mido had a screw down case back. I don't understand why screws would be a good choice here, but Mido decided it to be this way. Onto tactile elements, which is the bezel feel, the Tissot has a bit of back play. The ratchets are quite large and audible. I do feel like the Mido edges away a little bit better with this 120 click bezel, and the clicks are more robust. You do have more confidence moving this bezel around to its original position, and I like the insert in the way that it looks more than the Tissot. The bezel insert of the Mido Ocean Star 200 ceramic reminds me of the Omega Seamaster. Whereas the layout of the Tissot Sea Star ceramic bezel, it's more akin to a traditional Submariner bezel. I do think that they're both attractive and both of them have their own place. Bring the Tissot's dial under low light and it takes on a purple tinge. Bring it under harsh lighting and it appears to be more of a darker gray. I think it's an attractive dial, but I don't like that duality. The Mido, on the other hand, is more one-dimensional. The dial, being a flat gray, appears to maintain its color, and it's a nicer combination to its dark gray bezel than the Tissot. Dial quality is excellent on the Mido. I can't confirm if the indices are stamped or not, or applied, but I don't expect it to be that way in this price point. Compared to the Tissot, I think that the Mido edges ahead in dial quality. The overall sharpness of the printing is excellent on both watches, I can't really comment on the differences. The date function on both watches are different, being that the Sea Star has the date at 6 o'clock and the Mido at the 3 o'clock as a day-date arrangement. I prefer the Tissot in this way as it keeps the symmetry of the dial, though the feeling of having the Mido and having that day-date arrangement reminds me of a Seiko. The big triangular indice at 12 o'clock for the Mido is very distinctive and noticeable. It's sharper than the Tissot. I think just the Mido in general is a hair bit sharper than the Tissot in every single regard, right down to the hand finishing and also right down to its very similar Seamaster-like dial with those cutout hockey sticks that mimic waves. The Tissot is elegant with its sunburst gray and the large sword-like hands are prominent and legible. Being that both watches are from the Swatch Group, they benefit from the excellent quality control that I come to expect from an entry-level Swiss watch. I think that the Mido is a more attractive dial than the Tissot, but that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? I want to hear from you in the comments. Both watches are great in their own regard, but we do have to conclude this video with a winner. The Mido for me represents a more sophisticated experience. The bezel is tighter. The case finishing from the polished to the satinated surfaces is a little bit more refined and clearly distinguished. Even the design of the Mido to me resonates more as more of a Seamaster Submariner contemporary dive watch, whereas the Tissot on the other hand has this sharp angular case design with a polished midsection that seems almost sci-fi. The Tissot does have good loom. It reacts nicely to my torch, it takes on a blue hue. The 12 o'clock loom pip is also in the same color as the hands and the dial, which is a nice touch. I do think that the Mido, on the other hand, reacts far sooner to my torch and is a lot brighter. It also maintains longevity of brightness much longer than the Tissot. I think that if you can find the Mido, which you usually can on discount, it would totally justify its value for money and would be the one that I would pick in this comparison. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Please consider subscribing and liking the video and I will definitely catch you in the next one.